Hi everybody, I'm Jeffrey Driscoll. And I'm Jim Kerr. Welcome to 15 Minutes of Fame. Well, Jim, uh, this week it's uh, going to be a good week. I'm even going to get my notes up here. Yeah, there we go. Let's start yeah. out on the ice where we've got a couple of interesting personnel notes. First off, Marty Turco, back from Austria. Not Australia, two totally different places. <laughs> And he's back yeah. in the NHL. In fact, he played last night, Jim. Yeah, signed with the Bruins, managed to clear waivers. He got in, uh, got a bit of action, didn't look too bad. It'll probably take him a little while to get the, the rust off, but he's back with a good club, and he's probably loving that. Oh, yeah. Um, but uh, a little bit surprised to see him back, to be honest. But they, they had an injury to Tuka Rask in Boston there, and that's what happens. Absolutely. Uh, what I thought was interesting is I, I'm pretty sure, I mean, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure his mask was already had already been painted, and he also had <laughs> matching pads. So, like, I don't know if he was just, like, ready to go or what it was, but uh, he seems to oh. be, yeah, good to go right off the bat. Mind you. you got to be ready. You've got to be ready. <laughs> Maybe he's sitting at home. He's got, like, 30 NHL masks. He's like, <laughs> oh, anybody who, call, who calls me, I'm ready to go. <laughs> Maybe it's just stickers. Maybe it's just stickers. I like it. While all of that was going on, the New York Rangers informed Sean Avery that his services would no longer be needed, not even with the team's AHL club. Is this finally the end of the line for Jeff Driscoll's most hated NHL player? <laughs> well, I mean, when the, when the AHL team tells you just don't come anymore, that's, that, that spells the end of the line in New York anyways. Yeah. As for anywhere else, I don't know. I mean, there is... I wouldn't. I wouldn't expect to be a lot of, uh, you know, people jumping over each other for his services. But that said, I guess you never know. Every team needs a bit of sandpaper, and maybe some team will take him on as a, you know, reclamation project if he can sort of get his uh, get his career back on track. But I, I think it's the end of the personal. Yeah, I think he's going to go over and play in the KHL. Don't they have a team that uh, over there that's nothing but enforcers and pests? Yep. So maybe yep. he can, yeah, that's something. That's exactly it. So uh, you know they could probably find a find a place over there for him. But they actually fight is the thing. Oh, they actually right. They actually they fight. fight. Eee. Um, also, uh, I, I don't know if his pestering works as much when he can't uh, speak the same language as most <laughs> of them there. So I guess I guess that's a tough one. Yeah. What is sloppy seconds in Russian? <laughs> Uh, on that note, <laughs> back to uh, good parts of the NHL. Sidney Crosby has been cleared for contact. Uh, didn't play on Sunday. Could be back as early as Thursday. Will you be nervous to see how he does? Well, he, he passed the test the first time around, at oh, least yeah. for a, you know, a stretch of games. But I think everyone's going to be holding their breath a little bit. It'll be uh, interesting to see if he can come back and put up one of those four-point games again. No kidding. But uh, it's... It's very, uh, it's it's gonna be very interesting to see how he does and maybe how tentative he is. But the the real thing, see how Eddie Malkin plays because he's been absolutely unbelievable. Unreal. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, I don't know if he takes away time from Eddie Malkin or he makes him better. I mean, you'd hope he makes him better. Um, and uh, the other thing is like, I, there's just over a dozen games left for the Pittsburgh Penguins. They're in. They're very likely to make the playoffs. I don't know. Do you think they're trying to get him a couple of games before the playoffs? What I'm asking is, do you think they rushed him at all? Well, no. I mean, I think you'd, you'd have a hard time arguing they rushed him just because he's been out for so long. Yeah. And uh, you know, he probably they probably could have thrown him in on Sunday, but he wanted to get bumped around a little more in practice. And I, I think I think at this point, it's really not in their best interest to rush him. No. Not just because he's their you know prized possession. But everybody's watching. Oh, yeah, totally. And since we're talking about concussions, uh, a couple of interesting notes came up this week that we can mark under sign of the times. So first, San Jose Sharks coach Todd McClellan had some interesting things to say about concussions there, Kersey. Yeah, he, he got a concussion himself when yeah. he got hit with a passing stick. And he kind of admitted that he was pretty old school about concussions in, in his thought process about them. But having had one, he was kind of like... I sort of see it a little different now. That's 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 sort of a, an idea of maybe how uh, I don't know how, how representative he is of the the coaching population, but it at least shows that at least one NHL coach is going. Yeah, I didn't I didn't believe that they were this bad, but now I see it myself. And wow. 
Well, we see this, the same type of thing uh, and how the uh, Edmonton Oilers handled Tom Rennie's concussion. I mean, he was out for a long time, uh, you know, and they brought him back slowly as well. He was up in the press box watching for a little while, and, uh, you know, they seem to handle that uh, kind of the same way. So it seems like concussions are on everybody's mind, so to speak, if you will. Yeah. And uh, But, yeah, I'm sorry. I apologize, everybody. <laughs> uh, but you're right. It's interesting that uh, people see things a little differently now. It's good, I guess. And, you you know, that's interesting to hear from a coach, but what about Blackhawks captain Jonathan Taves, who admitted this week that he has played with concussion-like syndromes? Symptoms, yeah, you know, yeah, he, he said he had a tough time coming to grips with the fact that he probably had a concussion and he didn't want to be one of the guys around the league that he, you know, has seen dealing with them. So he, he sort of was in denial about it and finally kind of, yeah, that concussion. So, and that, that's two ends of the spectrum right there because now we're talking about a young captain of a team who isn't, you know, totally ready to, to admit it right away. But it's all stuff that it helps the cause, I suppose, in the long run. It was interesting, uh, just as a side, I was watching uh, The Grapes of Wrath, the Don Cherry story part two. I don't know if you caught that one, but it was on last night. And uh, exactly when I turned it on was when uh, they were talking about how uh, Don Cherry's in the hospital. He's got a bandage around his head, and uh, <laughs> Eddie Shore comes in. Eh? Eddie Shore and say, you know, says the bus is outside. You better get up. And the doctor's like, I, I'm not letting. He can't go anywhere. And sure enough, Don Cherry gets up, walks out, gets on the bus, and that's just kind of the normal thing. And <laughs> you know, hopefully, we've changed from that Neanderthal style. Oh, no. From then, you know, exactly. Um, let's move on to some football. There was some interesting stuff this week. The Indianapolis Colts have released Peyton Manning rather than paying him a $28 million bonus and keeping him around. Uh, about six teams are pushing for his services. What do you think, though, Jim? $28 million, do you think that had a lot to do with it? And what else is happening there? Could have. I mean, he's this neck injury kept him on a whole season. He's had multiple surgeries, maybe as many as four who knows what you're what you're buying essentially when exactly. you when you sign them up. A lot of teams looking for his services. The big story on the weekend was the Denver Broncos, home of Tim Tebow, right? Look for Peyton Manning service, and that you know shook a few feathers here and there. But there, there's a lot of teams. Uh, uh, the Redskins were also interested, but they ended up pulling a big trade with uh, St. Louis to move up in the draft. New York Jets ended up sending uh, Mark Sanchez. So a few teams out, but they're still. Still a lot of interest, and we couldn't find out as early as this week. Yeah, the only other thing um, I'm hearing there is that uh, he doesn't want to have to play in the same conference as Eli. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, which is kind of interesting. So that cuts down the amount of teams there, uh, certainly. Absolutely, and I think that was the case with the Jets, and I believe the Redskins too, yeah. and they, they kind of made it clear that, like, yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna play there. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Twenty-eight million dollars, though. That's oh, that's that's a lot of money. Um, mm -hmm. Exactly. Let's uh, move on to the Gabbies now. These are the good and bad by you. We take the best and the worst in the world of sport, and we usually make fun of it. If you've got a Gabby for us, hit us up on Twitter at fifteen minutes yeg, or uh, hit us up on email fifteen minutes yeg at gmail dot com. So let's. And, and it can't it can't be about us. No. Yeah. Please. <laughs> Not Unless about it's us good. at all. <laughs> Uh, let's give a good to Barcelona's Leo Messi, who scored a Champions League record five goals in a 7-1 win. Five goals, Jim. I think they call that like a, um, I, I don't know, like a, like a almost nearly a double hat trick. I don't know. What do you, what do you call that? Do you like, like a, a shin pad a, a, trick? Shin pad trick, or yeah, and, or a uh, pull your shirt over your uh, head trick. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so there's a 7-1 win this week, which is huge, by the way, in, in soccer, and uh, sent his club to the quarterfinals. Not that there was much doubt that they'd be there. Messi now has 12 goals in seven Champions League games this season, which is insane. God's dees. Yeah, it's all right. Whatever. <laughs> Uh, how about a good to 70 year old Hiroshi Oketsu? That's a good he recently qualified. Right yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. He recently qualified for the equestrian competition of the upcoming Olympics, participated in Beijing to become Japan's oldest Olympian the last time around, but will break his own record if he ends up uh, going this time. Horse isn't that old, though. The horse is much younger. Right, and the so, horse is the actual athlete. I mean, I'm going to offend yeah. all equestrians out there, but I think the horse is the actual athlete. So, I mean, come on now, really? Still, though, impressive. Very, very impressive. I, I, I don't know. Like, I'm 30 and, like, hurt my back getting out of bed these days. So <laughs> it's, you know, imagine being 70. 
Uh, and a good, our last good to David Beckham for showing up some Toronto fans at a CONCACAF Champions League game between TFC and his Los Angeles Galaxy in the MLS on Thursday. As Beckham was setting up for a corner kick, a fan threw a beer can on the field, which just missed him. Yeah, absolutely classless. He brushed it aside, sent a beautiful kick into the area, which set up the game-tying goal. Do you ever want to make a guy like that mad, Jim? I, I'm going to say no, and I... I... <laughs> they they had the win yes. in their sights, but it wasn't to be. Absolutely. Uh, let's uh, excuse me. Let's give a bad to the AHL and NHL for spelling Nicholas Grossman's name wrong from 2005 until this past week. <laughs> Turns out they spelled it with one N. It's actually with two. Uh, he didn't say anything though because he was just a young guy, happy to, happy to be playing. Come on, you got to fact check. They they noticed when they they glanced at his passport and were like, hey. Oh. oh, so they've changed it now. But fact, fact check, people. Oh. That's coming from a couple of journalists here. Fact check. Uh, you know, I just love it, though. He loves being in the show that much. He's like, you know what? Whatever it takes, I don't care. No big <laughs> deal. That being said, how many Russian players have their names spelled just completely backwards oh, yeah. on the back of their jerseys? You know what I mean? Absolutely. A bad to Chelsea Especially strike. since their alphabet's all different. Well, exactly. No, that's exactly <laughs> right. A bad to Chelsea striker Fernando Torres, who came into this weekend just 12 minutes short of going a full 24 playing hours without a goal, Jim, according to British papers. He has just five goals in 50-odd games of the club while pulling in over $280,000 per week. That's just about what Jim makes per week. Yep. He's still 12 minutes short because he didn't even play this weekend. Total mm -hmm. burn. He's had a tough goal. He's had a tough a goal tough, over there, yeah. for sure. Uh, he, he turned down a penalty kick during the week, too. Uh, I guess his confidence isn't there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't blame him. No kidding. Finally, a bad to, I think, yeah. we're going to give a bad here, to Jose Canseco. His Mexican AAA career <laughs> appears to be over. Sorry, I, I can't keep the laughter down. Uh, he refused the drug test. What? What? Um, acknowledged taking testosterone, but... He says he needs to take testosterone, and he has a prescription for it. Apparently, the team doctors told him not to take the test, but not taking a test uh, is, you know, worthy of a ban from the league. And so he's kind of, I think he's sort of appealing and getting his medical records and stuff like that. But looks like his AAA career in Mexico is over. Well, I don't know, well, like, oh man. I've been trying to follow it on Twitter, at least from his point of view, um, and it's not exactly easy to translate what he's talking about. Uh, so, yeah, come on, like, really. When you fail yeah. a drug test in Mexico... Oh, you, no, he, he just he didn't, didn't take, take it. it. Didn't take it. Okay, when you're <laughs> worried about failing a drug test in Mexico, yeah. you're in rough. Uh, <laughs> the punchline this week involves a couple of uh, Major League Baseball pitchers who became the latest players... To fall victim to the strange baseball injury curse, Jim. Mm -hmm. David Price of the Tampa Bay Rays hurt his neck while toweling down. A little bit of this. Just yep. giving himself a little wipe, neck spasms. Uh, his, his coach told him he should probably get a better technique. I would and, say so. And uh, this was after Yankees pitcher David Robertson uh, kind of stumbled down the stairs while moving boxes at home and hurt his ankle out for who knows how long. Absolutely. Like, Really? Baseball is just silly for that stuff. Baseball, it happens all the time. It's the weirdest thing. Um, nothing, 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 though, still beats Dustin Penner putting his back out, eating pancakes. Mm, that's but, true. You know, delicious pancakes is what I think the quote was. So. <laughs> uh, well, folks, that's our 15 Minutes of Fame up for this week. Join us again next week when we get a whole new 15 Minutes of Fame. In the meantime, I'm Jeffrey Driscoll. And I'm Jim Kerr. Have a good week, folks.